We three kings of Orient are. One in a taxi, one in a car. One on a scooter, bibi biru, to follow in yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of light. Star what caught me draws a light. Westward lead is still proceeding. What are you lot doing here? How did you lot get in here? Here, stop looking at me. Oh, what do you say? I'm not on OnlyFans, not during the day. What are you doing looking at me? Who do you think you are? And I can see you rumble as well. And you get up. Yes, I can. And a bit of shoot, well, there at the back. But I can still see you. Stop looking at me. You're invading my privacy, you are. You're making me feel all overexposed, you are, voo two vooers. A bit of shoot and rumble and get her and anyone else. I could get this out in, really, to be fair. So anyway, when you're here now, well, have you noticed I've been absent without leave? Did you notice? Because, well, I didn't notice for about, about a week or so. And then I thought to myself, you know what you're doing, Gertie? And I said to myself, what's that, Gertie? And Gertie, that's me, said, well, you're absent without leave. So I thought, oh, you are, aren't you? But anyway, what happened was, I'll tell you, I'll go to the beginning, but phone went about a week ago. Could have been a month ago, I don't know. I answered the phone and a voice said, is that you? This is Gertie Rude. I said, well, I said, it depends who's asking, doesn't it? They said, this is the producer of the Theatre Royal in your London town. I said, go on. They said, yes, they said, uh, we're checking to see your availability to appear in our production. Well, I said, yeah, I knew what his game was straight away. I said, well, I said, I've been waiting for your call, but I'm telling you now, before you even take another breath, I am not playing Widow Twanky in the pantomime this year. No, I'm bleeding not. No, he said, no. I said, listen, I said, what you need to do is you need to typecast me, because look at me. I'm obviously the lead in love interest, aren't I? I mean, do you know what I mean? You can see, can't you? Do you know what I mean? It's obvious, isn't it? So he said, yes, he said, well, he said, yes. He said, we've had a little bit of trouble and we're producing Sleeping Beauty. I thought, go on. And he said, yes, they said, well, Sleeping Beauty. Turns out she's got insomnia. Well, I said, yes, he said, so if you're available, if you could do tomorrow's matinee performance. I said, well, stand by me. I said, you could depend on me. No problem. And it's obvious. So anyway, I thought to myself, what's this Sleeping Beauty about? Anyway, it turns out, all I had to do was kiss some bird what was dressed up as a bloke up into bed and sort of lie still for a couple of hours. So there you go. I thought, well, that's a job for me, isn't it? And not only that, I can tick a box at the trans lobby now, can't I? Yes, because I've kissed... I've kissed your transgender people. Yes! Yes, I have, yes. So anyway, I got myself down there, kissed this boy, well, bird, dressed up as a bloke. Did you get me? Hopped into bed. That was it. Anyway, one thing led to another and I've had to stand back or down, or, or something. In other words, I mean, that's what you do when you're royal, and it was the theatre royal, so do you get me? But basically, I got the sack. Yes, I got the sack. I got the sack on account of the fact that apparently the producer said I was scaring all the children in the first six, six rows. Yes, because he said to me, I didn't know, but apparently Sleeping Beauty doesn't snore. So that was the end of that, so I'm back here now, I'm a Vutuvers. Anyway, so I'm gonna hawk my wares. I've got my, my lovely awards on. So, and I got that, and I'll tell you what I found out, and I don't know whether any of you have heard, but I've given you all the inside information on this. A certain couple, who shall remain nameless, is causing what could only be described as a bit of a bleeding shindig, voo two vooers. Yes, they are. They're up to their bloody shenanigans. I can't turn my back for a bleeding fortnight, I can't, before they kick off the game, can I? Hey, eh? They've been all over the bleeding place, they've been all over on my devices, they've been on my laptop, they've been on my bleeding telly, not that I watch the telly, because if I watch the telly, it's usually YouTube. And I never watch fit nits, nit, nit picks, whatever that's called, do you know what I mean? But they do, see? So they've got themselves on that nit picks. And they've been nit picking, basically, that's what they've been doing. Uh, they filmed themselves and they've gone out moaning, moaning about bloody everything. Oh, they want to tell us their story, don't they? They want to tell us their story. I mean, I'm not being funny. I, I just wanted to hop back into bed on the, on the stage, really, and get a couple of hours kit, really. I thought, here we blooming well go. It's going to be that wench book again, isn't it, for two verse? But it weren't. It was funding freedom and finding freebies, escaping with malice or the palace or whatever it was. 
becoming a royal boy or whatever. All of them, all condensed into six hours. Six hours for you two viewers. See, you can see why I won these awards, can't you? You can see why I've got, I've got the medal and I've got this for my service for my conversational property. I told you about that before. So anyway, it's just as well that I'm a gallant person really and I got to watch them, yeah. Well, I actually did have to get, I had to get some some cocktail sticks and sort of wedge me eyelids up a bit, I did. Well, I never did. It was a monathon of the highest bleeding order it was. Yes, it was. Oh, poor Barry. Poor, ba poor Barry, eh? Didn't you feel sorry for old Barry? His brother shouted at him. I ain't being funny. If I was your brother, I'd bloody clout you around the bleeding ears. That's what most siblings do to each other. I'm shouting there and I'm scared. And the Queen just sat there and said nothing or something or other. Stupid load of old bleed. How old is that bloke? He's got to be about 50 something odd years old, isn't he? The way he goes on. Have you seen his baldy head as well? Hey, 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 he's losing it. It's all that. Because she keeps patting him on the head, doesn't she? She keeps going lower, Barry, lower. Doesn't she? You can tell. She's a hoochie mama, isn't she? To be honest, she is. She's a good time girl. Yeah, she's a good time girl. And, well, turned out. She didn't like living in your Nottingham cottage in your wherever it was. She didn't like it. Because it was, well, it was in the grounds of a palace. But it wasn't a palace, it was just a cottage. You cheeky bleeding mare. Who does she think she bloody well is? She is the very epitome of a classless, entitled, spoiled, little hoochie mama. That's what she is, for two verses, isn't she? Hey, I bet she dances for money while well, she did, didn't she? She used to get herself on them yachts, didn't she? Yes, she used to get herself on them yachts. And for a couple of vodkas, well, she'd give you a bit of a go-go dance. Yeah, that's what I've heard anyway. So, she's moaning. She didn't like this and she didn't like that. And William shouted at him, this happened. And the Queen just sat there. Nah. I thought to myself, now you've tapped. This is a bridge too far. This is a bridge too far. I'm going to have to stop you there because I cannot put up with this. I, with this, I will not put. How dare you speak about the late, great Queen Elizabeth the Bleeding Great, the grandmother of our nation. Who do you think you flaming well are? And not only that, when she was sat there, was she sat there as your mother or your grandmother or somebody else's mother? Or was she sat there as the Queen? Because if she was sat there as your grandmother, what did you want her to do? Get up and start worrying around like a worried dervish? You were there with your older brother and your father. Everybody that's a granny knows that, well, your parenting days are over. There's only so much you can bloody say. And if she was sat there as the bleeding queen and the head of the constitution, well, in that role, she's going to be protecting the next in line, which is her son and his son. You stupid bleeding... I don't know. Honestly, what did Eaton ever teach you? What were you doing at Eton? Oh, well, I can imagine what you were bloody doing. Yes, I can imagine. Oh, you were the little snot at the back of the class with a pea shoe to us. I bet, weren't you? Horrible bloke. Oh, this and all that. And oh, well, if, if I can't explain to you about racism, well, I just can't help you. Well, thank fuck for that, eh? I don't think I want any help from you. The day I ever needed any help from the likes of you and your hoochie bleed mama, well, it would be a bad day for Britain, wouldn't it? Blimmin' cheek of it. Oh, oh, she said, oh, she said, anybody could call themselves a royal correspondent. Oh, I thought to myself, I thought, psst, psst, here, you don't hold the monopoly on the word royal, if I remember correctly, is what you said to our late great queen. I don't know who you think you are. You need to stop taking those drugs that you're taking. That's what you need to do. The snow or whatever is snow, it doesn't snow in California. Well, it bloody does that Monty shit show, I bet you anything. Snow's bloody far too much by the look of things. You need to get your bleeding head straight, the pair of you. What is this world coming to? Hey, eh? hey, eh? I can't believe it. Just sat there moaning and moaning about nothing. Every day, all bloody day, every time I turn on any of my bleeding devices, you're there, moaning your bloody head off about stuff. Why don't you just wind your bleeding necks in, for Christ's sake? Isn't Christmas a season of good bleeding will? And the worst thing is, well, well, we've had the three Lifetime movies, haven't we? As I've already said, Escaping with Malice. You had the book that we see, the emails that you actually did. Wow, you basically wrote the bloody script for that book, didn't you? Yes, Funding, funding Freedom, Finding Freebies, or whatever it was. Some bullshit book. Do you know what I mean? And those stupid Lifetime movies, Escaping with Malice, Becoming a Boy, or some old crap. 
Then we've had the Dax Shepherd podcast, not to mention the Opera Dot broadcast or whatever crap that was when you were on there. And oh, what else do we have? We've had the Cut magazine, we've had the Variety magazine, we've had 12 laborious weeks, which just seemed like my entire life every time I had to listen to that shit. Just went flashing past my eyes every week for an hour of just listening to you grizzle into the microphone of the most inanity. Wow. You just live in Cloud Bleed Cuckoo Land. And now, now, you produce six hours of a reality show that was like living in hell. It was like Halloween every day of the bloody week listening to you. I can't... Can you just shut up? Can you just stop? You're driving us all bleed mad. We've got cost of living crisis. I can't afford to put my heating on. I was snowed in in the... Well, in the deep Sussex wheeled I've been. Yes, snowed in I've been, Vutuvers. And did they care? No, they were just moaning about summit and nothing as usual. Bloody idiots they are. Anyway, she's just trying to copy me with all them awards. I've told you before. She knows I've got them proper and she's had to buy hers. So that's obviously put her nose out of joint. And then she said, what was it she said? Oh, she said, well, she said the Queen and Charles and Harry and William had a meeting and I wasn't allowed to join in. Well, well are you bonkers? Of course you're not allowed to join in. The meeting was about you and the trouble you caused. What can you bring to the table? Even more bleeding trouble. And you're so fey. And you're so, oh dear, oh poor me. Oh, oh. And I collapsed and cried into the arms of a security guard. I mean, they were so wonderful, these security guards. Didn't bother to get his name. No, no. Of what I remember when you moved to Monty Shit Show, you lost all your security detail, didn't you? Because they were fed up of being treated like Joey's, sent hither and thither to go out and get your coffee. Like Monty Shit Show, you ain't got one of them fancy pants coffee machines, have you? No, no. You're going to send your security detail out to Starfucks or whatever it's called and get you some slop or whatever. I mean, swill, that's what you should be eating. Load of old swill, the pair of you. So anyway, yeah. Oh, I collapsed. And I cried. Can you just stop crying? You're not a preteen. Every couple of minutes you're bursting into bleeding tears. Passive aggressive little minx you are. Yes, you bloody well are. And what's that other load of old crap you were going on about? Oh yeah, when I was on an aeroplane, somebody come up and took their hat off and said thank you for all we'd That's just bullshit. Nobody said that, Rachel. It's all in your bleeding head, you cuckoo. You're a bleeding narcissist, it's obvious. You're a malignant narcissist, and he's an histrionic narcissist. And don't even, don't even get me going on, Doris. That bloody Doris, I'll tell you what, she wants to come on my channel, she does, because I'll sort her right out, I will. Who does she think she is? Doris, oh, everybody's being mean to me. Oh, I know what that is, that's racism. Coming straight down the pipe, that is, that's racism. You dozy mare, you be smoking too much blimmin' Mary Jane again, don't you, Doris? You want to keep her? Stay off it, my love, because you're getting a bit old for it now. Do you get me? It's mixing miss, miss you up, it's making you appear a bit senile, love. Eh? Eh? So how do you get from people don't like me because I'm an arsehole to, oh, they're, they're racist. And you're supposed to be a bleeding social worker and into psychology. Oh, well, she was so depressed, but I couldn't do nothing to help her. Well, I think you should give your badge in, my love. I think you should give it up and just start a weed farm or something, but like the rest of the Markles. That's what you should do. Maybe you'd be as intelligent as them then. Stupid mare. I was sat there. Oh, oh, I didn't know what to do. And, and Thomas Marco, oh, shut up. You're a grown woman and it's your duty as a mother to put your bleeding daughter straight no matter what her age is. You don't feed into her narcissism. I know it's easy because that's what narcissists do. It's why they smell their own farts and everyone around them just has to blow smoke up their arse. Don't tell me about it. I was brought up by bleeding narcissists. I was brought up by a narcissist that makes, well, makes her look bleeding insane, and that's saying something. So there ain't a lot you can tell me about narcissism, I can tell you. And everybody around them suffers. And the only way you can stay sane is get the fuck out of Dodge. That's all you can do for two viewers. The only way you can stay sane is get out of there and keep running and never look back. That's what you want to do. Bloody cheek, innit, eh? I can't believe it. Oh, Doris... You're supposed to be a grown woman. And it wouldn't be too bad if you were just a grown woman. A granny, a 68 or whatever you are, right? And you just sat there saying this, that and the other. Sort of like, oh, see now, because you smoke too much dope, yeah? But on top of it, your profession is in the psychology. Huh? I mean, it's your fault she's like it if you keep feeding her that load of old crap. Oh, it's because they're racism coming straight down the pipe at you, honey. Oh, shut up, Doris, you stupid, bleeding woman. 
Well, all I can say is apples don't fall far from the tree, do they, Doris, eh? eh? You have dealt it and you can bleed and dwell with it as well. That's what you can do, because I'll tell you what, this is going to get a whole lot messier before it starts getting any better. Yes, it is. And you have nobody else to blame but yourself, Doris. Yes, well, and as for your daughter, Rachel, the hoochie mama, I think I'm just going to let sleeping dogs bleed and well lie. Sleeping Beauty, you see, like Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Dogs. So there you go. So anyway, Vutuvers, well, I'm glad you came really, but if you can stop, just stop looking at me because I don't, I don't like being overexposed. Do you get me? So it's only left for me to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And if I can, I'll get myself on here and maybe do another turn. I might sing you a song. I might show you my fancy Christmas drawers. Who can tell? I might do a live. We just have to wait and see what way the wind blows, and well, what those two bloody won't get up to, because I've had enough of it, food too, booze. I've had it, I've had it up to here. I can't take it anymore. Not when there really are problems in the bleeding world, and you've got those two prats over there. There aren't any words to describe how, how, how disgusted I am by them. Especially their attack on the Queen, who, when she was sat there at the Sandrium meeting, that's made us... It's like a meeting of Versailles or something, the way they go on about it. Oh, the Malta Conference. No, it was a meeting between your dad and your brother and your granny. That's all it was. Don't pick it up and make it out to be something you bleeding well won't. They're exasperated with you. And the last thing they wanted is for you to bring your latest bleeding, well, your latest bit in with you, really. It's caused enough bleeding problems as it is. Hey, it makes me laugh as well, because Chelsea, ha, <laughs> she's had a baby. She's happy now she's got away from you. So anyway... Happy Christmas to everybody, Vutuvers. I don't wish those two happy Christmas because they've ruined this year, haven't they? And they ruined the last, the last months of the Queen's life, they did. Yes, and you do know that the disease the Gracious Majesty died of is a secondary disease. So there's every good chance that when she was sat in that boring Sadrium conference with Barry, Baldy Barry, right, she probably had a lot of other ailments as well. So we need to keep that in mind when we think about those two rogues. Don't be voo too verse. So anyway, happy Christmas to you all. And to all, a good night. Love ya. Bye. Bye.